Before we get started with the upgrade process, I would like to take a look at the 1624 lathe in its original configuration. The small viewing windows that I pointed out indicate the position of the belt and speed settings. The start and stop buttons are located on top of the motor. as well as a forward reverse switch. While the process of belt changing is fairly easy on this unit, it still takes some time. In order to change speeds in the original configuration, the motor must be stopped each time. The door over the pulleys is large and provides easy access, as shown here. On to the task at hand. The first step will be removing the belt. First loosen the T-shaped handle and use it to move the cam to the up position which releases pressure on the drive belt. Then remove the belt from the motor pulley and push aside. There are two 19mm nuts that hold the motor mount onto the headstock. First remove the 19mm nut and washer that holds the cam in place. followed by the remaining 19mm nut and washers. If you haven't done so already, use the T-lever to lower the cam to the lower position. With the nuts and washers removed, lift down the motor mount slightly and work the cam loose from its mounting post. In order to remove the red belt cover guard, start by removing the screw located under the cam mount by lifting on the motor slightly to reveal its location. Be careful to try not to drop it, as I did here. The next screw is also hidden. It is located under the motor mount bracket as well. Again, lift the motor slightly to gain access and remove the screw. The remaining four screws are easily accessed and removed as shown. If your lathe has a hand wheel, Remove it at this time. Now you can remove the red cover from the lathe. After removing the cover, I noticed just how dirty it was inside the headstock of my unit. So with all these parts removed, I decided to take the opportunity to vacuum out the headstock. This step is completely optional. Now remove the motor and mount assembly from the headstock. The first step in removing the pulley is to remove the set screw from the small hole in the base of the pulley using a 4mm Allen key. After loosening, I tried to use a magnet to retrieve the set screw which didn't work. Just let it drop onto the motor and retrieve it after removing the pulley. This worked well for me. The instructions say to use two large screwdrivers to pry off the pulley. I was not comfortable with prying, so I tried using wooden shims, which did not work. So I ended up using a cold chisel and a large screwdriver as opposing wedges 
and this worked. As you work your way through the removal process, the use of wooden shims and eventually a piece of three quarter inch plywood will be required using this method. Carefully remove the pulley from the motor, as well as the key from the keyway. And at this point, you can retrieve the set screw if it fell out during the removal process. With the pulley removed, you can now remove the eight countersunk screws using the four millimeter Allen wrench. This will allow you to remove the mounting flange from the motor. Here is where things went wrong a little. There was no clear direction as to the correct alignment of the mounting flange to the motor housing. So I ended up repositioning the flange three times before getting it correct. In the first two attempts, you'll notice that once getting the motor mount back onto the headstock, there was not sufficient room for the cam to operate. I did eventually discover that there is a spot on the motor housing where the fins have been relieved a bit to make room for the cam to move, which I point out in the video. Armed with this information, I was able to determine the proper positioning of the mounting bracket. Using the cam, I determined the best orientation to mount the flange to the motor. At this point, I replaced four of the eight screws. Please note that the countersunk side of the screw holes face up. After having gone through the process several times, I decided to test fit to ensure proper operation. While we're in this close-up view, I just wanted to make note of the fact that when installing the motor, it is necessary to install the cam prior to fully seating the flange on the mounts at the rear of the headstock as shown. Looks like it works this time. Here I point out once again the relieved area of the fins on the motor housing. After successfully positioning the mounting flange, I installed the remaining four screws and replaced the pulley on the shaft, making sure that the key is properly installed. Reseating the pulley required a few light taps from my mallet using the plywood block as an insulator to prevent damage. Then I installed the set screw. Now that the motor and mounting flange have been assembled correctly, we can go ahead and put everything back together. I'm including footage of me putting the unit back together. However, these steps are simply the same steps that we've accomplished already, done in reverse.
Now that the unit has been reassembled, it is time to address the reinstallation of the belt. The belt should be installed on the 1440 speed setting. The instructions reference the use of the lower speeds for additional torque. It should also be noted that use of the higher speed settings are not recommended. Use of the higher speeds exceed the safety limits of the belt and pulley system. Again, only the 1440, 1020, 684, 360, and 214 RPM settings can be used. Be sure that the belts are aligned properly on the pulleys, close the door, and apply tension. And now comes the final portion of the upgrade process, which is installing the control panel to the unit. Go ahead and line up the holes in the bracket with the threaded holes in the motor housing. Using the two provided screws and two washers, go ahead and start the screws with finger pressure and tighten using the four millimeter Allen key. The only step left is to connect both the Molex and the DB9 connectors from the motor into the appropriate ports on the controller. You'll also want to take the time to tighten the finger screws on the DB9 connector. Congratulations! You have now completed the DVR motor upgrade process for your 1624 lathe.